everyone welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new welcome thank you for joining me I am looking over at my desk which is sitting right here and you can kind of see it here in the corner but I have a huge pile of books just sitting there and I've been I'll give you a little bit of backstory here about my book problem maybe it's not a problem but my book love my love for books I'm a bibliophile so if you don't know what that means, it just means book lover. Like, I obsess over books. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always loved stories, and I've loved reading books. I've loved being, um, I loved story time in class when our teacher would read to us. And I just loved going to the library and just kind of looking through and seeing what books just piqued my interest. And as I got older, I started going through reading programs at our public library or through our school library, and I would always exceed the expectations of people in our in my age range so um, for example I remember when I was in seventh or eighth grade I read like I don't even know how many books it was an obscene amount for a three-month period so I've always been an avid reader and over the last few years I found myself just kind of falling away from it I'm pushing myself to get back into reading because it's been a long time and every year I think about oh yeah I'm gonna get back into reading or oh yeah I'm gonna read so many books this year and it never happens but for whatever reason I've just been inspired to start reading again so I'm gonna talk a bit about reading and um, and what books I'm currently reading what books are on my read list so far and what I have read so far or at least recently that I think others might be interested in or that I found to be um, kind of moving. Stay tuned if you want to know what's on my current read list. There's a few books that I've read recently that I think are really interesting. So at work I run our women's network and we started doing this mentorship program which is based around a book called Playing Big by Tara Moore. This is it. Um, you can see I have notes in, st in little bookmarks here. This is an amazing book. I feel like this is a must read for every young woman, old woman, in between, middle aged woman, new, career, new in your career, retiring, whatever, wherever you are in your life. This is the book for you. The reason I love it so much is that it, it actually, Tara is very intuitive. She knows her stuff and um, she talks a lot about how to meet your full potential, but not in that hurrah, rah, we're going to cheer you on, you can do this kind of thing, but it takes you on a journey of self-discovery, and there's some really powerful exercises in the book that really, um, really hone in on what's holding you back from moving forward. So I love this book. I was so incredibly honored to um, get to interview her and talk to her through a live Q&A at work. Um, we did a huge workshop session with us, so I've been able to ask her a lot of questions. So this is not sponsored, but this is a book that I've just, I read through and I just thought, wow, it is so good. It isn't very often that you come across a self-help book or something of this nature and think, yes, that was an amazing book, or this is something that I need to pick up and read. I don't really gravitate towards the self-help books that are more like, hey, reach your maximum potential, or here's the next big thing in your life. It's just not my thing. I always feel very spiritual about how and where my journey goes, so I don't really rely on books to tell me how to get there. I've always just kind of been intuitive on my own, but this book, seriously, piqued my interest. It was recommended to me by um, someone senior to me in my career and she was just saying it's so good you have to read it. I'm not someone who is usually moved by books like this and it moved me to tears. That's what she told me so I thought well if it's powerful enough for you I suppose I could give it a try. I read the first three or four chapters and thought oh my gosh this is just that good so this is um, playing big I definitely recommend it for any of the books I mentioned here today I'll have links below to Amazon they are affiliate links so if you do want to click that affiliate link and order a book off of Amazon then that does help me out with this channel so thank you in advance the next book that I've recently read through was Brave by Rose McGowan and this is her story telling about how she got through her life in Hollywood and a lot of the turmoil she faced with being raped by Harvey Weinstein she doesn't name him in the book um, probably for legal reasons but 
um, just talking about how she made it through and how she got through this Hollywood landscape of corruption and uh, misogyny and such and it's just it's a very powerful memoir um, I w I'm also part of another book club uh, you see a theme here um, through Fairy God Boss which is um, kind of like Glassdoor but mainly for women um, they ha they launched this book club and Brave was on the list um, we got to vote on our next book and so I was like yeah it'd be great to read Rose McGowan's memoir and, and just kind of learn more about what she endured um, and they did a live webinar and Q&A with her and so we got to ask her questions which was really cool so um, she's just so down to earth and just um, you know very approachable very honest very straightforward and this book is nothing short of that she writes in a style that's very poignant and in your face but it's just honest and truthful and there's just no BSing anything so I appreciate that style and I think it's a book that everyone should read only because if not only for the fact that you want to understand more about how women need to be supported but it's also just to understand kind of this backstory to the whole Me Too movement and understanding where where these women were coming from. So definitely a good book. Okay, now on to some fun fiction. Um, I picked this up when I was in New York City uh, many, 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 many months ago. And it looked interesting. I had heard a lot of good things about it. The backstory is basically this girl unfolds the story about her mother's disappearance through letters and different correspondence her mother has with various people and she's piecing together this story. And it seems kind of like, eh, well, it's what's so compelling about these letters she's reading but it's just the way that it's told it's very humorous the humor of Maria Semple is kind of like mine kind of dry kind of satirical kind of I'm gonna make fun of something and if you find it funny great but if not then you think I'm a total B <laughs> just kidding about that part or am I but um, yeah it's very entertaining and it weaves just these family drama it, it kind of reminds me of Desperate Housewives in the in the way that it outlines this kind of radical weird situational uh, components that you think that could never happen but it's just entertaining at the same time because the underlying story is just more about how these pieces fold together and and how someone could go from hey I'm around to I'm gonna go missing and everyone's going to be left picking up the pieces around me like how does that happen and this is just a wildly entertaining story about how that happens in um, in suburbia Seattle because this book takes place in Seattle so it's called Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple very funny very very funny I read through it in like a day and a half on my Vegas vacation not gonna lie it was a page turner I just cannot stop on my way home from Vegas, I went into Hudson News or whatever that little store is called, and I had only intended to buy bottles of water. Fifty dollars later, I come out with cheese and crackers and waters, a couple magazines, and this book. <laughs> and it's called Who is Vera Kelly by Rosalie Necht. I really enjoyed this story because it takes place in the early 1960s during a time like the Cold War was really starting to be prevalent. Communism was a very scary thing and it takes place in, in Argentina. This gal, um, her name is Vera Kelly, she is in the CIA. She is drafted into the CIA to spy and find leaders in the communist um, in communist groups to try that are trying to overthrow the government so it's her job to try to figure out what their plans are and to report back to the CIA there's a lot of themes there where she can't be herself it it kind of goes back and forth between two timelines of her growing up to the present time which is where she is at in Argentina doing her um, her field work and she has a tumultuous relationship with her mother. Her father had passed away years before. She is a lesbian in the 1960s, so you can imagine how rough that was. So to blend in, but also not be labeled as gay or as someone who belonged to that scene, because back then it was illegal. Um, police officers would raid bars and clubs and things like that if they thought that anyone was congregating for the purpose of being a homosexual because it was so scary. So there's a lot of um, 
elements of that in there but it's it's just a really good story about her trying to overcome these obstacles in her life while also bringing you into present day time Argentina in the 1960s where she realizes that there's a revolt and she's stuck. She gets stuck in Argentina and she's trying to leave and the CIA kind of just dumps her and she has to find her way home. Read most of it on the flight home and had about this just a little little bit left when I got home and read it and then fell asleep and took a nap because I was tired. Alright so I'm in the middle of reading two books right now. I am reading Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, this one is really unique. Um, yeah. Um, it's a series of stories and it's kind of like science fiction meets poetry meets um, prose, I guess is the best thought. I don't even know how to categorize this. There's a lot of metaphors and poetic elements in throughout written throughout these um, these stories so they're like psychological realism with um, science fiction with uh, comedy and all sorts of weird things and um, like the first story is about a woman who um, who wears this green ribbon and her husband wants to take it off and she fights him throughout their entire marriage like do not take my ribbon off it will destroy me and at the end of it she lets him take it off and, and then what happens is kind of weird um, but it's the element the element of it is just about how women are perceived in society and how we have to act things that we have to protect within ourselves and then things that we have to um, guard and and also do just to function like how is it what is it like to actually be a woman and how do we characterize that in a way that would make more of a an interesting like how bizarre is it when we think about it that we have to act certain ways to be acceptable in society or to actually have equality with men things like that so I think it's really interesting um, I'll have more thoughts behind it once I get through the book I'm about halfway through I just read up to the point where it's called um, especially heinous which actually takes Benson and Stabler from Law and Order SVU and and kind of tells a new story and twist on that but in a very psychological thriller type yeah I don't watch a lot of those mind-blowing kind of weird things but I think you would get it but really interesting so far the other book that I'm reading I haven't picked it up in a while but I probably need to start over just because it's been a while I got about halfway through it and it's called my Antonia I think that's how you say it my Antonia my Antonia I always forget when you place them it's got the um, accent over that first a so it's like Antonia but I've heard people say Antonia so I don't know I feel like it should be an Antonia. Let me know in the comments below how it's actually pronounced, if I said it correctly the first or second time around. Um, but the author is Willa Cather. Cather? Cather? I love historical fiction and this just focuses on immigrants who were bohemian, so like the uh, Czech Republic, um, Poland, that kind of area, and Europe I believe. Um, I could be wrong. But they immigrated to the U.S. and they're pioneering with all these other folks and they're just telling the story of America and going into the Midwest and the prairies and the hardships that they faced. I haven't gotten, as I said, I only got about halfway through so I never really got through the whole book. So I'll probably have to reread it. But what I did read so far was pretty good. Um, as I said, I love historical fiction and this is nothing short of historical fiction. So that's what I'm reading. Now my to read list is longer and I'm going to try to wrap this up because I realize how long I've been talking. I'm going to read Pussy, <laughs> a reclamation by Regina Thomas Shower. My friend Cassandra gave this book to me, I think for my birthday or for Christmas. And it's, um, I don't know too much about it. From what I gather from it is like a reclamation of that pejorative word, <laughs> pussy. And kind of like pussy power and empowerment and and coming into your own kind of story is what I imagine it being about but it seemed really interesting my friend said it was amazing and that she really loved the book it made her laugh and cry all in one so I'm gonna probably read this one next I picked this up like two days ago this is called Under the Udala Trees by Chinelo Chinelo Okparanta Okparanta 
Aquaranta. I apologize to Chinello for possibly butchering that name, but it sounds really interesting because it takes place in Nigeria and it's about kind of the heartbreak that happens in Nigeria with displaced children, but the, there's an, an element in the story of this girl who falls in love with another girl and it's forbidden love and overcoming that and um, it's won an award. It's won the Lambda Literary Award and it just seems like a really good book. Another fun read that I just recently picked up is Gregory Maguire's After Alice. So if you don't know who Gregory Maguire is, he wrote Wicked. So I, my first experience with him though was not through Wicked, it was through his um, reinterpretation of Cinderella. There's a wasp flying around my room and I'm highly allergic to bees and I just got terrified. Anyway, I think it's called The Evil Stepsister or something like that. Well, this is his reimagined version of Alice in Wonderland. So I'm looking forward to it because it's just unique. Obviously, Wicked was a unique story and new depiction of Wizard of Oz. So reimagined, just really unique. I'm looking forward to reading that because when I read the Cinderella one, I just could not put that book down. It was really good. So it's kind of... I feel like it kind of falls into young adult reading, but it also is adult worthy. I'm gonna say young adult books are just as good as adult books. I don't really see the difference between them. Harry Potter being one, like really, who cares? Another one that I'm gonna read is called You Will Be Mine by Natasha Preston. This was a gift. My niece bought this for me for my birthday, so thank you, Maddie. My niece is 15 years old, so she's old enough to read books like this. Um, it's like a murder mystery, I think. Yeah, a murder mystery of sorts. So I haven't really looked into seeing what this is about, but this is on my must read list and it sits by my bed. And I'm like, yes, I will get to that soon. Another book that I picked up when I was in New York City, I picked it up at the same time I picked up the uh, Where'd You Go, Bernadette. And this is called Damascus Nights. And it's by Rafiq Shami, Shami um, translated by Philip Bohm. So it's like Arab storytelling, kind of like an Arabian Nights uh, type of story, but it, there's a bunch of little stories in here. I love historical fiction. I love learning about other cultures. So this just really appealed to me because I like the idea of folklore and hearing legends and reading about just different historical elements. So, and it uses classical Arab tradition of storytelling, which is actually a very familiar um, concept to me. I am Native American and storytelling is a huge element in my culture. So that kind of resonated with me so I wanted to see kind of if there's some parallels there but yeah kind of like fairy tales but Arabian. The final books here are books that um, I've gotten through work they're non-fiction they're very fascinating and interesting I'm probably not going to read them in the very near future only well obviously I have a ton of books here one of them is The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein, Rothstein and it talks about how the tw in the 20th century, redlining was something that existed and it talks about the history of redlining, what it is, why it's important, and how we can desegregate, desegregate neighborhoods and there's gentrification that's happening in society even now, and how we can be more mindful of uh, minority groups who are displaced and or kind of redlined in, in so many ways. So redlining is um, kind of a mortgage and real estate term that was used to identify communities that were riskier than others in providing mortgage loans for buying a home. And it was perfectly legal, it was based on maps that mortgage lenders and other government agencies had created to say what neighborhoods would be risky loans, which ones would be better loans, and it was all based off of racism essentially so it's just a, a historical look at that information plus how it plays into society today in neighborhoods and bigger cities and even smaller cities where you still see a lot of um, homogeny uh, between in in races and such. Another good good book, I'm really excited to read this, is called Better Together by Jonathan Sposato. I've heard him speak a couple of times. Um, he is a VC or venture capitalist who in this book he talks about creating gender balanced workspaces and how he came to the conclusion that he doesn't want to invest in companies unless there's equality and diversity between uh, gender so both men and women and that women have an equal footing at at the table the um, metaphorical table of decision making hi Ussies hi Yama Bobobos 
Another book I'm looking forward to reading is called Presence by Amy Cuddy. I don't really know too much about this book. It is signed by the author. It was a gift. I got it at uh, a conference I went to. So it's about bringing your boldest self to your biggest challenges and just being present. And finally, Rotopia by Emily Chang. She's on Bloomberg TV. I can't remember the name of the show off the top of my head. Let's see. Bloomberg Technology, which is a daily TV show on Bloomberg. She was previously a CNN correspondent based in Beijing. So she's very well known in the tech space. And she talks about gender diversity in the workplace as well. Um, and Brotopia is this idea that women have to fit in with this dude bro type of locker room kind of male dominated type of floor where the only way you fit in is if you act like them and how that's very damaging to a company in so many ways so she talks about that a lot in this book and how to overcome this brotopia kind of work environment to make it more inclusive for everyone and for businesses to profit in a better way so that's my reading list, a giant list of reading book materials and a much smaller list of books that I've read, but I get full enjoyment out of reading and yeah, lots and lots and lots of stuff here. So let me know what you're reading or if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned here and what your thoughts are. Also, if I mispronounce names, please tell me how, um, please correct me in the pronunciation. Anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Happy reading and I'll see you in my next video.